Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to an all new makeup I'm glad I didn't buy. So it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but I know you guys really enjoy this series, so I'm excited to film an updated version. Okay, here's why I love this series, and I just think it's a good exercise. There are so many occasions where I feed into the hype of a new product. I see it on Trend Mood, I see the reviews everywhere, and I'm sold. I'm like, hey, it looks like great quality, it looks like something I would enjoy, I'm in. And in the past, that's kind of led me to maybe make some spontaneous purchases that don't make the most sense to my collection or to my lifestyle. And what I've found is that when I kind of pause on different products and take a step back, evaluate whether or not it would make sense in my routine and in my collection, that's when I make better purchasing decisions. I kind of like to use that as my guide, you know? Sometimes I will buy things like immediately when they release, mostly because I have a YouTube channel. However, I usually try to hold off for a bit and then in maybe a couple weeks or a month, I say, hey, am I still interested in this? And if I am, that's a great sign that I should pick it up. But for all the items in today's video, I was interested at first, but now I look back and think, okay, I'm glad I skipped it. First things first, Natasha Denona. Let's talk glam and bronze. Bronze came out first and I was pretty interested in that because this was right after I picked up two of her mini palettes and I was really liking those. I really enjoyed the formula. I just mentioned those in my mini palettes video, which is gonna be up at the time that you see this video. That one is already up, I'll link it below. But what I did with the bronze palette, I actually grabbed another palette in my collection that has a lot of bronze shades and tried to recreate some looks that I thought I would probably achieve with that palette. And the palette I did that with was the Born to Run from Urban Decay. And it's funny, I felt like I did one or two bronze looks and it was out of my system. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I need this palette. I don't think I'm as into bronzy eyeshadow looks as I think I am. Though today you could say this is like bronzy maybe. Now with the midi sized glam, I was a lot more tempted because I love cool tones. However, with this one, I told myself, I'm like, you know what? It's $65, hold off for a bit. And I mentioned that, I think it was in like one of my will I buy it videos when this came out a few months ago and I said, hey, my birthday's coming up in November. I'm gonna hold off and if I still really want it by November, that will be my birthday present to myself. And here we are in November and instead for my birthday present to myself, I bought the Charlotte Tilbury wands because those are what I was craving more than this and I'd kind of forgotten about it. Now, the thing is with all of these products, I'm sure if I bought them, I would enjoy them. I don't think I would buy them and completely regret them. My mindset here is more so that I didn't need them as much as I thought I did. You know, there's a lot of makeup out there. There's a lot of new releases. Sometimes you just have to be picky. We can't own everything. Kinda like the Hocus Pocus collection from ColourPop. So I have not purchased anything from ColourPop in quite a while. And this one, when I heard they were doing a Hocus Pocus collection, I was excited because I just, I love that movie. I know many of us do. It's a very iconic Halloween movie. That's one of those that I just feel like I have to watch every year. Like I have my Christmas movies that I have to watch for it to feel like Christmas. The Grinch, Home Alone, and Halloween. That movie is Hocus Pocus. But looking at the shades, I really was not into the palette at all. And for me, I'm like, okay, what I'm just interested in here is the packaging and the theme. So instead, why don't I just go watch Hocus Pocus, appreciate it, and I don't necessarily need to have a palette to confirm my love for that movie. Another nostalgia-based almost purchase were these from Makeup Eraser. They collaborated with SpongeBob. Okay, one thing you should know about me, I used to be obsessed with SpongeBob. Like growing up, I loved that show so much, even still to this day, maybe not the newer episodes, but if you put on an older SpongeBob episode, I'm not kidding you, I could probably recite the whole thing word for word. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so when these came out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. It's so nostalgic. Okay, it's seven makeup erasers, which I get the concept. It's cool, you've got all the characters, you've got every day of the week. And I was like, hey, you can always use products like this. Why not buy more so that, you know, when one is dirty, I can use another one. But then I started counting. I'm like, okay, I have one makeup eraser. I have three face halos because those come in a pack of three. So I'm like, okay, there's four. Plus I have the elf one. I'm like, okay, there's five. I have five of them right now. I don't use this type of product every single day to remove my makeup. That's just not my skincare routine. I prefer a double cleanse. What I use these for is to kind of get off stubborn eye makeup or stubborn mascara that's not coming off. I think this is a really easy way to take them off. 
pre-COVID, I did use these every day because I went to a gym every single day and it was just an easy way for me to remove my makeup without doing like my full skincare. But these days, based on how minimally I use these, I don't think I need seven more. Also, the thing about these type of products, they do contain microplastics. So while they are arguably a better alternative to a makeup remover wipe, they're still not like 100% sustainable. So I don't really want to be just like padding my collection of makeup removing cloths. However, I did see recently, if any of you guys have tried this, let me know. I've heard that you can buy a little bag to put any of your microfiber things in. And when you wash them, that bag is supposed to collect all the microfibers so they don't get washed down the drain. I hope I'm saying that right. That's something I need to look into more, but if any of you guys have tried it or know anything about it, let me know, because I think that's a cool idea, but I'm gonna have to look into it more. Okay, the Elf Rider Dye Lip Balms. This one is so random, and like, I mean, I'm sure if I picked it up, would I be like so mad about it? No, but I wanted to pick these up because I feel like everyone's been talking about them. And looking over everything, they're all, for the most part, tinted lip balms. I really don't ever use a tinted lip balm. I just like a clear one. So they have one clear one, but it's mint. And what I know about myself is that I really do not like mint lip products. And oftentimes, lip products that contain mint are actually kind of irritating to the lips and long-term can just cause them to become more chapped. And I'm not saying that would necessarily be the case with this one, but I just know personally, I don't wear mint lip products, at least not balms, you know? But I kept thinking, hey, maybe I get it. Everyone's raving about these. But do I have plenty of lip balms in my collection already? For sure. So I'm gonna hold out. Maybe one day they'll release another clear one that's a different scent. And then maybe that will be my time. Okay, do you guys remember these freckle pens from ColourPop? This feels like an eternity ago, but it was really just like earlier this year. I was like, oh my gosh, cool, something different. I don't have anything like this in my collection, which is a lie. I have eyeshadow and eyebrow products, which I could probably get a similar look with, but I'm thinking, oh, hey, that's fun. Let me buy this. Okay, first of all, I have freckles. So do I need to buy a pen to draw on freckles? Probably not. But mainly, this is just something I know I wouldn't use. Like, I think the first week that I get it, I would probably think, okay, this is fun and wear it a lot. After that, am I going to draw freckles on every day? Probably not. It's definitely a product that could fit into the fantasy self category. I did a video like about those products a while ago talking about the products I buy or keep thinking, okay, one day I will have the perfect occasion where I need a purple lipstick, a freckle pen, when in reality, I probably won't. Okay, last one, another nostalgia-based release. I think this is something we've always seen, but these days we're seeing it a lot more. You know, you've got the Star Wars, well, I guess Mandalorian collection with ColourPop, Hocus Pocus, we've seen Nightmare Before Christmas. This was the Friends collection with Makeup Revolution. Okay, here's the thing. I want someone else to do a Friends collab and do it better than this one. I talked about this in like a roasting palettes video or like a will I buy it style video, and I mostly focused on the palette However, I was kind of thinking, should I get one of the lipsticks? I really enjoy Friends and I love that like iconic 90s lip. However, if you guys follow along with my Project Pan series, you know how long it takes or how long it takes at least myself personally to use up a bullet lipstick. Like how many more do I need? I buy a lot of the same shades or at least similar ones, which is fine. I love nudes. I get use out of them. But at some point, there's gotta be a cap, okay, Kelly? And if I'm mostly buying this for the packaging and the concept behind it, is it the best addition to my collection? Probably not. So I skipped that whole collection, though I do think it's cute to see a collaboration with friends, but I just didn't feel like that one was very well executed. But if you guys picked up anything that we discussed in today's video, let me know down below. Like I said earlier, I don't think any of these are bad products, and I'm sure if I purchased everything on this list, I don't think I would be super disappointed. I don't think I'd be throwing them in disappointing products videos. But it's also clear to me that I didn't really need them and I've got a really fantastic collection, very well curated that I love and I'm trying to keep it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to this channel, I upload Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.